Thank you for watching this video from Kingsway Soft. Today we will introduce the two ADO.NET data flow components offered within the SSIS Productivity Pack. The SSIS Productivity Pack is a collection of premium SSIS components that enable greater developer productivity and increases the power of SSIS. As of this recording, two components work with ADO.NET connections, the premium ADO.NET source component and the premium ADO.NET destination component. When compared to the out-of-the-box ADO.NET components, we offer much greater usability along with some advanced functionalities, such as the support of all kinds of database operations, including update, upsert, and delete actions, which are not found in the out-of-box component. Additionally, the premium ADO.NET components support a wide range of data providers, including SQL Server, Oracle Server, PostgreSQL, MySQL, DB2, Firebird, Sybase, SQLite, as well as other ODBC and OLE DB connections. We will begin with the premium ADO.NET source component. Let's quickly create a package level ADO.NET connection manager. The premium ADO.NET source component can be used to read from databases over an ADO.NET connection. Let's drag the premium ADO.NET source component from the SSIS toolbox to the design surface. Double click to open its editor form. Select an ADO.NET connection manager. Next, the data source dropdown will display a list of available tables and views from the database. Once a data source is selected and the prepare command checkbox is selected, the command property will automatically populate, generating a basic select statement for reading from the database which you can make changes accordingly based on your business requirements. The command timeout field allows you to specify the number of seconds for the command timeout value. By default, it is set to 120 seconds for a maximum of 600 seconds. The transaction type dropdown provides the option to specify the type of transaction with a choice of either explicit or implicit. This is useful in the source component to guarantee the correct reading of isolation levels. If the explicit transaction type is used, the transaction isolation level dropdown becomes active to allow you to specify concurrency behaviors for the database tables. The isolation level options will be automatically populated based on the data provider chosen. As highlighted to earlier, the command text box is the command text that will be executed over the connection manager to read data from the database. A basic select statement is automatically generated when selecting a table or view from the data source property. You can then further customize the command to your liking to perform powerful queries. The command text box also supports the use of user and system variables. Simply select a variable under the Insert Variables drop-down menu and a placeholder value will be inserted into the filter text. The Import option allows you to load SQL from a file into the command property. The export option allows you to save the SQL in the command property to a file. There is also an option for a preview dialog that shows the result of executing the text in the command property for the first 200 rows of data. It is important to note that if the command makes any changes to the database, the changes will appear in the preview but are rolled back immediately. Changes to the database will only commit at runtime. The expression FX button launches the SSIS expression editor to allow for dynamic updates of the property at runtime. Clicking on the Generate Documentation button will generate a Word document containing the component's metadata, including relevant mapping and other details. Navigating to the Columns page, you will find a list of the available columns based on the query command provided. By default, all fields are selected. As a best practice, you should only select the ADO.NET fields that are needed for the downstream pipeline components. Let's go back to the general page to modify our query command. Note that unselecting a field does not mean that the field is not read from the database, but just that the values from the fields are not sent to the downstream pipeline components. Let's now head to the pre and post commands page, which allows you to specify the commands you wish to execute before and after the component execution by simply entering the commands in the appropriate fields. Click OK to finish configuring this premium ADO.NET source component. 
We'll quickly add in a dummy data reader as our destination component to receive the input rows from the source component. We can now execute the task successfully. We will now demonstrate the premium ADO.NET destination component. As mentioned before, the premium ADO.NET destination component facilitates writing to databases. Let's quickly configure a source component first. We can now drag the premium ADO.NET destination component from the SSIS toolbox to the design surface and connect the two. Double click it to open its editor form. Let's select an ADO.NET connection manager. The premium ADO.NET destination component can write records to a database by using insert, update, upsert, delete, full sync, and custom command. Insert simply adds the records to the destination table, while update revises the existing records in the destination table. Upsert works by checking if the specified record exists in the destination table. If it does, the component will perform an update. If no such record exists, the component will insert a new record. Full sync synchronizes the input data to the destination table, but differs from upsert in that it can delete records in the target system, but not in the source system. Custom command allows you to write your own database command. When custom command action is selected, you will notice a command text box and tree view will appear. The tree view contains a list of input columns, SSIS variables, and database tables from the selected ADO.NET Connection Manager. Selecting a table will expand it with its columns. You can drag and drop the items in the tree view to the command text box to help construct the command. During runtime, the command is executed for each record in the input. Column and variable values are properly parameterized and prepared for the database. When selecting update, upsert, or delete, a new option will become available. Only update, upsert, delete, first match. If the option is enabled, it will update or delete the first matched records. Otherwise, it would update all matching records. Using this option has the same effect as if you use top one clause in your update or delete SQL statement. Note that if the database does not support the top keyword, the command will fail when the option is selected. Next, the destination table dropdown will display a list of available tables for the database specified in the connection manager. Besides the destination table is the Create Table button, which once clicked will auto-generate a command based on the selected connection manager and input columns to create a new table. This allows you to further customize the command to suit your needs. Once ready, click on the Execute Command button, and you will be informed that the command executed successfully, and the table you created will be selected in the destination table dropdown. The command timeout field allows you to specify the number of seconds for the command timeout value. By default, it is set to 120 seconds, to a maximum of 600 seconds. The transaction type dropdown provides the option to specify the type of transaction with the choice of either explicit or implicit. If the explicit transaction type is used, the transaction isolation level dropdown becomes active to allow you to specify the concurrency behaviors for the database tables. The isolation level options available will be automatically populated based on the data provider chosen. The write mode option allows you to specify how the data is written to the target database server, either by row or by bulk. For best performance, bulk should be selected, which then allows you to choose the batch size. The batch size option allows you to specify how many records you want to send to the target database server at a time. The default is zero which means the SSIS buffer size will be used. The Prevent Null Overwrites option allows you to ignore any fields that have a null value. By ignoring a field, the null value will not be sent to the target table. This option is only available for update and upsert actions. The Duplicate Handling option allows you to specify how input duplicates should be handled when the bulk option is enabled on update, upsert, delete, or full sync actions. There are three options available. Remove all but last, remove all but first, or ignore. The use permanent temporary table 
is an option for rare situations where the default configuration of the component does not work. The current configuration of the component requires the use of a temporary table. The purpose is to store all incoming rows temporarily using bulk insert before merging them into the final destination. By default, a local temporary table is used. However, in uncommon conditions, this does not work due to the session ending prematurely, which renders a temporary table not accessible. In these special cases, the use permanent temporary table could be enabled, which would create the table in tempdb. The table is dropped when the SQL Server is restarted, as well as when the component completes the execution successfully. The Expression FX button launches the SSIS Expression Editor to allow for dynamic updates of the property at runtime. Clicking on the Generate Documentation button will generate a Word document containing the component's metadata, including relevant mapping and other details. Navigating to the Columns page, we will select the columns to map from upstream components to the columns from the specified destination table. Since we are using the upsert action, we will have to pick what columns are to be used as the upsert keys. As you can notice, it is possible to select a compound key. This column is not available when using insert because there is no condition, and is also not available when using delete because every column is a conditional field. The input column displays the columns from the upstream component, whereas the destination table column shows the field you are writing to. The lookup feature maps the virtual lookup input column to destination table column. When this option is selected, the component can perform a lookup based on input values. To configure the lookup feature, map the destination table column with the virtual lookup input column. From here, you will need to select the target table, target column, lookup table, and the returning column. When a default value option is specified, the component will use this value to write to the data column should the input value lookup fail. The lookup condition allows you to create the lookup conditions by adding, removing, and grouping lookup conditions, creating logical expressions for your lookup conditions, as well as assign the lookup column, operator, and input value. Heading back to the general page, the data type column indicates the type of value for the current field, while the unmapped column can be used to unmap the field from the upstream input column, or otherwise, it can be used to map the field to an upstream input column by matching its name if the field is not currently mapped. Let's now head to the pre and post commands page, which allows you to specify the commands you wish to execute before and after the component execution by simply entering the commands in the appropriate fields. Over on the error handling page, there are three error handling mechanisms to choose from. The default option is fail on error, where the entire data flow will fail as soon as an error occurs. There is also the redirect rows to error output, where the error output will contain the failed records with extra columns for error code, error column, and error message. There is also a third option in which you can ignore any errors that may have occurred. Click OK to finish configuring this premium ADO.NET destination component. We can now execute the tasks successfully. This concludes the demonstration of the premium ADO.NET source and destination components within our SSIS Productivity Pack. There are many other components in the Productivity Pack that enable developers to accomplish more in SSIS in a much more productive fashion. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to take a look at our other videos available for viewing on our website or YouTube channel. For any further assistance, please feel free to contact us.